Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to create running totals, and I'll show you two examples. Now, we may have some data like this, and we've got a total here, and really to bring up totals, you can use the sum function, or you can use the addition function. I use the sum function here. I can select all that, press enter. Oops, what is it doing? It's saying, oh, I wasn't supposed to conclude C14 because that's the cell. It, let me do it again, sum and select all this to see 13, press enter, and yes, 7292. Now to create a running total, all I need to do is the first cell, it's gonna be this. The second cell is gonna be that plus that, all right? And what we're gonna do is copy this formula down because it's gonna add that to the cell above. Double click it to bring it down. You notice that that and that are the same. Now, if we had something where we are continuously adding to this, it'd be kind of a chore to always double click the fill handle to bring that formula down. What we can do is turn this into a table. Let me give this a title, run total. And let's say that the next year, let's turn this into the table first. And the way we do that is go to insert table or use the keyboard shortcut control T, which I'll use control T. It's gonna turn into a table. My table does have headers, click okay. And now all I need to do is press tab and type 1-31-2018. That would be Q4. Let's give it a number, 100. And now you notice that it's changed that, right? So it's copied that formula down. And that's the beauty of tables. When you have formulas, it copies it down when you enter in new rows of information. And this is helpful if you've got additional data you're going to be adding all the time to, uh, let's say I think that also falls, the end of the month also falls on the 28th, Q2, and let's do another 100 here, you can see that it's changed that. Uh, let's make sure those fall on the end of the month, let's say 1-1-2118, and then 1-2-1-2018, let's make a check, and I'm going to make check with the end of the month function, that's the start date, how many months, zero because that's going to be that month. Oh, and it used serial number for format, so let me turn it into date. 131 is that, that's correct, and let's go, let's bring that down, 228, that's correct. So I guessed it correctly. Now another way we can do running totals is to turn that inf this information into a pivot table. So all I need to do is go to insert, and pivot table, let's put this particular location, let's put it right here in cell F4. Click OK, and I'm going to bring in the date here, and you'll notice that with Excel, this is Excel uh, in Office 365, and it, I think it also does it in Excel 2016. When you bring a date down, it starts to kind of get smart and uh, break it out into months or years. This, In this case, it broke it out into months, so we have our January, February. If I did that, it'll give you that uh, January 31st, which is my data here. And Excel does that. Uh, there's a way to turn it off, but uh, I'm okay with it right now. I can bring the quarter in, and bring the quarter in, and let's get rid of the month. Well, actually, let's, let's get rid of the date, since it made that it made months there. And let's bring in my quantity, all right? So now I have my quantity. I'm gonna expand all this, right click, expand everything. All right, so I have my Q1. It's kind of hard to see they have the quarters underneath January. So I'll go to design and change the layout to tabular format. So now it's there. And let's get rid of the subtotal. All right, so we have it like we have it here, except without the, the date and the month. Now, what I can do is I can bring in the quantity again and change it. So I'll change it. I can do it here, or I'll just go into one of the fields here in that column, right click, and I want to show values as a running total. So is it a running total in the quarter or a running total in the month? I'm gonna have it running total in the months. Click OK. And now you see as each, each month comes down, it's gonna have a running total. You can see here, what it's done is it's give you a running total until we get into Q1 for each of them because we have that we have that quarter there. So if I move quarter, now you notice that it, it click it does the running total all the way up to 792. So depending on uh, the values that you put there, if I put quarter first, it's going to do my running totals the same. It's going to kind of break it out. So depending on on what type of elements 
that you put in your rows, it's going to do that for you in also the way that you had it summarized. So if we had it summarized and we did running totals in quarters, it's going to do it a little bit differently too, right? So each quarter, it's going to bring it down. That quarter's running total is going to add that, that one, add Q2, add Q3, and then Q4. So depending on what kind of objects you have in your rows and how you selected it to have running totals in, uh, it's going to look a little bit differently. So just be aware of that. In here, we can also increase the date or add another date and it will reflect it, right? I forgot to show you this one. If I added another date, Q1 and 100, all I need to do is right click, refresh. And the reason why the pivot table didn't refresh is because we have to change our source data. Look at what's happening, right? We have the pivot table that's being sourced by A1 to cell A13. To have it source again, we can, we can say A14 to have it source from everything. Click OK. And now when we right click, refresh, it's going to add it in there. And unfortunately, it added it in as Q1 January because we didn't include the date. It's all It just sees Q1 and January. There's two instances of it, and it added it there. What we need to do is add that date there and remove this. Let's remove that subtotal and see if it picked it up. It still didn't pick it up, so let's remove quarter and remove quantity. And probably because, whoops, let's add, let's control Z to undo that and bring back the quantity as a running total. Let's do a running total uh, in terms of date. Click OK. And probably the reason why it, it doesn't see it, and let's remove months, the reason why it doesn't see it as 85852 on. <laughs> January 31st, 2017, and another one is the way that we have this structured. So one of the useful or annoying things about the new versions of Excel is when you put dates into the rows field, it groups them. It automatically groups them. It gives you these, like what it did, when it, gives you, it gives you these these months, right? And so if you didn't want to group them, we go to Analyze, and we select Ungroup, and it's going to ungroup them. So what basically it's done is if you wanted to group them back, you can click on group and you can group by months, years, and maybe we can add years. That might be something nice to add. So you see that it's added years here, right? So it's given us January here and there. And that could be useful. But in our case, it's really not that useful. Let's ungroup it. And we have that. So we have our dates there. And we have our sums here. And let's right click. You are showing our values as a running total in the date. Click OK. And now we have our running totals, what we just showed earlier, right? So that's what we can do there. So we have our new edition here, right? January 31st, 2018, uh, 2018. But it's really kind of annoying to always have to go back and redo the change source data. Why don't we just turn this into a table? Control T, click OK. This, this is probably what we should have done in the first place before creating the pivot table. But now this pivot table sees that now. I can press tab and do 2-28-2018, Q1, and add another 100, press enter, click on the pivot table, right click, and select refresh, and it's going to pick it up now without going in to analyze and change source data. That is the beauty of tables and using it as a source of your pivot table. So it's always a good idea to when you have your data here, turn it into table and then turn it into pivot table and any changes here become dynamic. So there was the example that I showed of creating running totals. First using the addition and creating table and second using a pivot table to do running totals. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.